Hello and welcome back to America's Forum right here on Newsmax TV. I'm John Bachman. And I'm J.D. Hayworth. John, we have to talk about finances and loans and lending. In 2013, the Obama administration launched Operation Choke Point, a project designed to eradicate three sectors of the private lending industry, third-party payment processors, payday lenders, and online lenders. The UK-based newspaper, The Guardian, has labeled the project the U.S. financial regulator's very own stop-and-frisk system, explaining the regulators frisk the bank by sending a subpoena for all the financial information on their clients who could potentially be up to no good. If the government finds something suspicious, it investigates further. But Operation Choke Point targets the financial institutions uh, the working poor rely on when larger banks refuse them alone. So despite the program's good intentions, many tens of thousands of people are going to be left paying extra debts and dealing with mounting debt. Sounds like a similar idea with good intentions, uh, Obamacare. Well, we'll leave Obamacare for a second, but here to talk to us about Operation Choke Point, Senior Managing Director of FDI Consulting, former Chairman of the FDIC, William Isaac. Mr. Chairman, thank you for your time and welcome to America's Forum. It's great to be with you today. Now, Bill, first of all, can you tell us the Obama administration's reasoning behind this new measure? Well, Operation Choke Point uh, was developed by, as I understand it, was developed by the Justice Department to try to sort out uh, and, and discover and, and prosecute financial fraud, uh, particularly focused on uh, online uh, lenders. And I don't have any problem with uh, at all. In fact, I would applaud anybody who's trying to investigate and uncover financial fraud and prosecute it. Uh, unfortunately, it, it's going way beyond that, and uh, it's actually causing banks to throw out uh, of the bank pay, uh, a lot of payday lenders and other companies that make small loans to people, people who, who desperately need them. And, and so these, these companies are not being allowed uh, access to banking services, even though they're engaged in perfectly lawful activities and they're regulated under state or federal law in those activities. Well, you mentioned regulation, and of course, having been former chairman of the FDIC, Mr. Chairman, do you know the role that the FDIC plays in Operation Choke Point? I, I really don't. Uh, it, there, there seems to be a fair amount of cooperation uh, between the Justice Department and the banking agencies. Um, and. And to the extent that they are, they're truly focused on uh, people who are violating laws. I don't have any any issue with that. But I, that's not what's happening. What's happening is is that banks are looking at 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 these industry groups and saying, I don't want to do business with them uh, at all. It's just not worth the risk. And so they're they're refusing perfectly legitimate lawful businesses that are serving a very useful purpose to millions of people. They're just they're. They're tossing them out of the banking system. They're not, they're not willing to do business with them. Although you mentioned those payday loans and the people who need those uh, loans uh, just basically to get by. Aside from them, who, who else is going to suffer the most as a result of this? Well, millions of people are using uh, payday loans. But another problem I have is where does this stop? Um, if you, if you uh, allow the government to go in through the banking system and deny banking services to perfectly lawful businesses that are uh, regulated under state or federal law and are not engaged in illegal activities, if you allow the government to go in and, and, and deny those people banking services, essential banking services, where does this stop? What's next? It's payday loans today. Maybe it's uh, donut shops next week. Maybe it's, it's, uh, uh, maybe it's uh, people who sell fast food restaurants who sell uh, food with high trans fat content or convenience stores that sell big sugary Slurpees. Where do we stop? Uh, I mean, I, I think that this is a very dangerous trend and one that we, we all, all Americans ought to be concerned about. Now, Bill, during my days in Congress, I served as co chair of the Native American Caucus, had uh, any number, a, a significant number of American Indian constituents. Uh, could you explain uh, how Operation Choke Point? damages the, the tribal trust relationship between the U.S. government and American Indian tribes? 
it's my understanding. I'm not I'm not real familiar with it. It's my understanding, though, that the the uh, several of the Indian tribes um, would like to operate payday lending um, uh, from their you know from their prop their their own their own land. Uh, and heretofore, the federal government has basically said, we don't regulate um, the tribal land, and you, you're, you, you are your own country, and you can do as you wish. Uh, and they, for example, gambling, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the casino gambling that, that uh, uh, took pl- has taken place in a, on, on the tribal lands has been very helpful to the Indian tribes in, in getting uh, people uh, out of poverty. Uh, and and that is something that that they were able to do without without government regulation, uh, federal government regulation. T- today, uh, they're trying to engage in payday lending activities, and and the, the the DOJ, as I understand it, is is being taken a pretty hard line and trying to keep it from happening. Well, Mr. Chairman, you've outlined something here. Article One, Section Eight of the Constitution grants Indian tribes sovereign immunity, and you're outlining this, and it is really troubling to hear that now the feds under the guise of a crackdown want to just sweep away that that sovereignty and say look our regulations and this ban extends over to to tribal land so i would imagine there is going to be a great deal of pushback from the national congress of american indians and a variety of tribal groups based on that sovereign relationship that article one section eight of the constitution provides I'll give you I'll give you an example of, of something that I just read in the paper yesterday. It was in the American Banker newspaper, um, and I don't know anything about this firsthand. I just know what was reported uh, in in the article as an editorial, actually, in the American Banker, that a very large bank recently denied service to a company that either manufactures or distributes I'm not sure which uh, uh, condominiums. For females, and the reason why this very large bank refused to do business with that firm is because that industry, the production of condominiums or distribution of condominiums, was was something that they felt involved too much reputational risk. Well, we got to leave it there, Bill. But you bring up a great point, and that's where does this stop if this goes ahead? So we'll keep our eye on this and be back with you here on America's Forum. The favorite part of the show is coming up Friday, and your comments right after this.